breaking news, the Biden administration announcing student loan relief. Big changes are coming for millions of Americans with student loans. Borrowers will be getting some relief, $10,000 in loan forgiveness. After three years of a freeze on payments, it is time to start paying back. Borrowers must resume paying off their entire student loans. Prepare your bank accounts to take a hit. Payments are scheduled to begin with no money forgiven at all. Hey guys, I'm Dave Ramsey. Welcome to our free live stream, Student Loan Debt in America. How we got here and how we get out. I'm standing on the debt-free stage here in the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions. And we have noticed, like you have, that a financial tsunami is about to sweep this nation. We have federal student loan debt, our student loan debt in total of about $1.7 trillion in America right now. 44 million of you have this student loan debt, and it's coming at you like a train right now. Interest started up September 1. Payments will start October 1. Average student loan being almost $40,000 a person. In the midst of this, over the last three years, a couple of different presidential administrations have given you the ability to kick the can down the road, and then they've made a series of false promises about student loan forgiveness and well, the results are in. It's not coming. So what are we going to do now? Payments are going to restart, and everybody's going to be impacted. People are scared. Some of you are really confused, and some of you are angry. You expected the forgiveness to come, and now it's not there. But either way, we've got this reality of October the 1st staring at you, and uh, you're kind of having an old crap moment. What am I going to do now? i got to get an extra job. I gotta get five extra jobs. Uh, how are we gonna make this work? I'm in trouble. This is, I don't know how we're gonna do this. Well, last week we went on Instagram and we asked for your questions and we had about four million folks on Instagram, so a couple of you answered and gave us a, your, some questions that we'll weave into this live stream tonight. First one is Nick on Instagram. He said, Dave, these loans just really scare me. It makes me feel, it feels like they come with a two-ton weight on my shoulders. Dr. John Deloney that works in the mental health space, one of our Ramsey personalities says that the body keeps the score. You physically register stress, trauma, worry. It does feel like a two ton weight, especially when you've got a, a mountain of debt in front of you that you don't know how you're gonna climb. So what are you gonna do about it? Well, a lot of people have been stuck, a lot of people have been paralyzed, a lot of, been pe a lot of people have been sitting on uh, the bank of the denial, like denial is not just a river in Egypt. Hello. I mean, you've been putting this off about as long as you can. So what's got people stuck in this? Well, one thing is they were waiting on the government to bail them out. They were hoping that President Biden was actually going to pull off a forgiveness uh, process that obviously the Supreme Court said no to. You can like that or not like it, but it's a reality. That's where we are today. The government created this mess, and the government is not going to clean it up for you. That's the problem. And a lot of people are stuck because they're searching for some kind of a hack, like the forgiveness programs. I'm going to go into the, uh, the, you know, the, the private or the public student loan forgiveness program, which is a, a, a bloody joke. Here's why it's a joke. 1.6% of the people that have applied after being in that program for 10 years, waiting on forgiveness, serving doing their career in a nonprofit or an underserved area of some kind, counting on forgiveness after paying payments for 10 years, 1.6%, 98 out of 100 did not get it. 1.6% were successful. So this is not a hack. This is a problem. And another thing people are trying to do is they're trying to get yet one more time, kick the can down the road with some easier payment plan, some way that I can make the payment small, which of course means you're going to be in debt forever. You're going to have Navient or Sally Mae or God help you, one of the others in your living room for the rest of your life. Guys, I got to tell you, 
what we've been doing so far, what you've been doing so far, not working for you. There's a better way. It's scary out there, but facts are your friends when you're facing something that's overwhelming. A recent TransUnion study said that 50% of consumers are going to end up with a $200 or more monthly payment. 20% of consumers are going to be $500 a month or more, and a lot of you are going to be paying way more than that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say facts are your friends. Open the student loan statement. Open the website. Find out who your servicer is. About a fourth of you have a brand new servicer out there. And that means 16 to 20 million people somewhere in there have someone else servicing their loan than when this three-year pause started. So you're going to have to go find out who your servicer is. You're going to find out what your balances are. You're going to have to find out what the programs are. You've got to gather facts, and that will lower your stress and give you ways of doing this. <clears throat> Student loans are not going to leave your life until you take action. You take action. No one's going to do it. No Calvary is coming. You're going to do it. And we're going to help you. We're going to show you how. We're going to cheer you on. 30 years of showing people how to get out of debt on the Ramsey Show radio show, talk radio, podcast, YouTube now, uh, on stages and live events, uh, 20, 30 million books sold now showing people how to get out of debt. Uh, we've seen people dig out of what looked like impossible situations, but they got mad. They got the facts. They got intense, and they would not rest until they put the debt behind them. None of them relied on the White House to bail them out. They did it in their house, and that's what you're going to do. You're going to do it in your house. People who build wealth, who get clear of financial calamity like a massive student loan debt and go on to build wealth are people who control the controllables. They control their own destiny, and you can do this, guys. I know it's scary. I know it feels like it can't be done. But we're going to show you, a lot of people that have done it, we're going to show you exactly some of the steps you can take to get there. So if you're ready to eliminate debt so that you can build wealth, if you're ready to get your life back, we're here to help. And there's no easy thing. This is no microwave. This is a crock pot. It's going to cook a little while. No one accidentally wins. Winning is an intentional act. As a matter of fact, winning is a series of intentional acts that causes someone to be what we call successful. Successful in their career, winning the Super Bowl, winning the Stanley Cup, winning in your marriage. It's a series of intentional acts. The same thing here when it comes to winning with the student loan debt. Mess in your life, getting it out. Naomi's on Instagram. She says, I feel so lost. I can't even, I don't even know how to come up with a plan. Well, Naomi, you're in good hands. One of our Ramsey personalities, Jade Warshaw, she and her husband, Sam, they paid off hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt and a lot of it student loan debt. She knows exactly how you feel and she has an experience to prove it. My old pastor said, there's a man with an experience is not at the mercy of a man with an opinion. So Jade is the woman of the hour to tell you about this stuff. Welcome, Jade Warshaw. Thank you so much, Dave, wow. I'm glad to be here. I'm so happy to be here with you tonight. And here's the thing, if you're watching this live stream tonight, it's because you've got student loans. And the first thing I wanna say to you is, and I know what you're feeling. I know how that feels, man, the anger, the frustration, the guilt, right? The stress that you're facing, knowing that these loans are coming back and that these payments are due in October. I know how you're feeling firsthand. I mean, some of you know my story, some of you don't, but my husband and I came out of college, looked up and realized that we had $460,000 of debt of which 280,000 of it were student loans. And I mean, here's my list of debts here, Sam and I, we had so many different debts. They highlighted the, the student loan ones in green, but you can see here, we had Sally Mae on there several times, of course, Nelnet, Navient, look at this one, ACS, $128,000 of debt. I know how that feels, private loans, federal loans. And I remember one of them, this big one down here, they busted it up into lots of little debts and each of them had a different interest rate on it, right? Some of you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. And some of those interest rates were in the teens, okay? So we're talking about massive payments, massive amounts of interest accruing. And can I tell you the worst part of it? When we started out, we were only making $30,000 combined income 
just two musicians trying to make our way. And I'll tell you what, in those moments, we thought it was absolutely hopeless. I mean, we thought there was no possible way that we could get out of this debt. And to make matters worse, the people around us, they weren't telling us anything different. We had family members say, you're gonna die with this debt. There's no point in even trying to pay it off. You'll die with it. Man, they were wrong. And anybody telling you, hey, trying to get out of student loans, you know, it's, there's, it's pointless. There's no way to get out. You need somebody to come help you. You need to depend on the government. They are wrong. And do you want to know how I know they're wrong? Because I proved them wrong. My husband and I proved them wrong. We paid off every single cent of $460,000 of debt. Yes, that is close to half a million dollars of debt. And we did it in seven and a half years now. The student loan portion, the $280,000, we did that the last three years of our debt-free journey. And guys, I'm telling you, we didn't wait around on the government. There was no uh, forgiveness plan in place. It didn't take 25 years in the right administration. We took matters into our own hands. So all of the they's out there telling you that it's not possible, telling you that you're stuck, telling you you'll never be free, let me tell you something, they're stealing your hope they're stealing your future. They're stealing your autonomy to be free. Last time I checked, you can go out there and you can change your own life. And I'll be honest, anything else is an insult to me. And if it sounds like I'm getting pissed, it's because I am. But it's not at you. I'm pissed for you. I hate when I see government systems dangling this carrot in your face saying, hey, just hang on a little bit longer and we'll give you that forgiveness. Just give me a few more votes and we'll give you that forgiveness. No, ma'am. No, sir. I don't like that. I don't like the golden handcuffs of public service loan forgiveness. If you just hang around for 10 years, hang around for 15 years, maybe we'll be there. They've already told you. Less than 2%? Come on, that's garbage. I don't want that. I want something better for you. You know what? I have an idea. Here's something we can both take on today. What if we make forgiveness? What if we make freedom and forgiveness your job? What if we just did that? What if we stopped waiting on everybody else to come save us and you become the hero in your story? Man, what if you took responsibility for your future? You would have so much freedom not waiting for someone else to come get you because here's what I can tell you. The system, they're not gonna put you first. They've never put you first. Think back. They've never put you first. They never will. They can't, okay? So here's our moment. Here's our line in the sand. We're gonna decide right now we're getting rid of excuses because here's the thing, and let me validate this. Some of you have some really good reasons, right? We're looking at our, our parents and we're going, how could they let me sign up for this? I was 18, okay? Why didn't they stop me? We're looking at uh, educational institutions and we're saying, how could they do this to me? They were supposed to lead me and guide me. We're looking at financial institutions. How could they let me sign for that amount of debt? And yes, there are some real people who did us wrong, but here's the thing. We may never get what they owe us. Matter of fact, we're not gonna get it. So what do we do? Do we sit around and wait? No, we take that power into our own hands. We make our freedom, we make our forgiveness. Go out there and forgive yourself. Trust me, you can do it and it's gonna be worth it. So how are we gonna do this? First, we're gonna get organized. Like Dave was saying, this is your time. You've all been getting the correspondence. I know they're changing your service loan provider. It used to be Navient, now it's Moella. And then they changed it again. And you're like, oh my gosh, where are my loans? They're all in different places. That's okay, cool out, take a deep breath. Open your emails up, okay? Call the 1-800-PAY-ME number and find out who's got your loan, right? And then we're gonna find out how much it is, okay? Find out who got it. Now we're finding out what are we paying and does this payment work? Okay, so we're gonna take a couple of questions because I know you all have questions about, Jade, I've got my payment, but you know, I'm hearing about these IDR plans, should I do them? So let's take it, a question from Maribel. She came through from Instagram. She says, Jade, what's your take on the save plan and um, what are the pros and the cons? So let's talk about the save plan. Um, you've probably heard the acronym IDR, which are income driven repayment plans. And just like it sounds, these payment plans are based on the size of your family and how much income that you're bringing in, right? So you might've heard some of these income payment plans can drive your costs down to almost zero dollars. And you might be thinking, Jade, why not do this, right? And the fact is a lot of you have been, it's the stats say that 4 million people have recently enrolled in these plans. But let's be honest, 
you didn't enroll, you were kind of forced in there like cattle, right? You were automatically enrolled in this plan if you were already previously in a plan. So the question is, hey, should I do it? I'm in it now, is it gonna work for me? So in order to answer that question, let's go to this next question from Zaina. She says, Jade, should I pay them off ASAP, talking about her student loans, or should I make minimum payments? Why or why not? So let's try to tackle those two questions at once. So here's it is, Maribel, Zaina, here's what I can tell you. These are facts and these are also derived from my personal experience. When it comes to payments, Whenever you lower the payment, a lower payment equals a longer period of having the debt, okay? So remember this, lower equals longer. Lower payment, you're having that debt forever, and I don't want you to be like that. Now, here's the thing. You can lower your payment, say your payment's $400, you get it lowered to $36, and you're like, Jade, I can pay $36 a month for 25 years, what's the big deal? I'll tell you what's the big deal. You still feel that debt. Okay, you still know somewhere in the back of your brain that you owe the government money and your body feels that. Dr. John Deloney says all the time, the body keeps the score and it's so true. Think about it like this. Have you ever had friends coming over to your house, right? Or you know, you've got family members coming over, but the house is a wreck. And so you're like, oh my gosh, they're coming over. So what do you do? You pick everything up, you slam it in the closet, you push the door closed and you're like, okay, welcome everybody. And you're like sweating a little bit, but you're forcing a smile, right? Think about it, you know what's in that closet, you know it's there and it's going to haunt you until you go and deal with it. Because in the moment, that was a quick fix, right? And you knew it's not a long-term solution. It was just a temporary fix. And that's what these IDRs are. They're not your long-term solution. Think about it. With the IDR save plan, what happens is you start with $12,000. That's just you know that benchmark to get in. So at $12,000, you've gotta pay for 10 years in order to get forgiveness. And for every thousand more that you borrow, it's another, thousand, it's another year that's added to that term. So 13,000, 11 years, 14,000, 12 years. That's how it works. That's ridiculous, because where I come from, I'm not gonna insult your intelligence. I know you can get out there and earn $1,000 just doing some side hustle. You could pay off a $12,000 student loan in one year if you put your mind to it. So it's ridiculous. At the end of the day, guys, what I want you to know is these student loan programs, they don't want your peace. They want your payment, that's it. So the only time, the only time that I would entertain an IDR such as the SAVE plan is, I was, if, as, is if I was going to use it to temporarily lower my minimum payments, right? And then I'm taking all that freed up money and I'm throwing it at my smallest debt so I can pay it off fast. And then I'm gonna repeat that process. So for instance, here's a case in point. At one point, Sam and I, our student loans totaled $2,000 a month in payments. That's a lot of money, that's almost a mortgage. And so being able to lower those payments temporarily, it helped us free up money to then focus on all of our smallest loans and pay them off. For example, that debt I showed you that was 128,000, we had gotten it down to 91,000, but the payment was still over $900 a month. So we got on one of these plans and lowered it to $257. And when we were able to do that, it freed up a lot of cash to pay off our smallest debt quickly. That's what we call the debt snowball. We didn't wanna just get by on payments. We wanted to pay the debt off for good. And that's what we're gonna help you do tonight. A1 is we're gonna help you find peace and making your minimum payment. And then the next step is we're gonna help you ultimately pay these loans off for good. And that's what I'm talking about. So in order to do that, I am going to bring up the beautiful co-host, not Dave, I'm talking about Dave's daughter, <laughs> Rachel Cruz, best-selling author, oh, host of the Rachel thanks, Cruz Show. Jade, yes. I can keep going. I know. Personal well, finance I mean, expert. It's, it's great, it's great. No. Oh, Jade, I'm so excited about tonight. Yes. I really am, and I love hearing her story. I hope you guys enjoyed that because I'm like, you are the perfect picture of hope, of actually walking through this and showing you guys that this is possible. And that's what we want for you tonight. You signed up, you clicked on the link, and here you are. And we wanna be able to empower you, not just with inspiration, knowing that you can, but also tactically. So Jade, that's what I wanna dive in yes. right now with you, because there are some money moves, five money moves that we want you to make to really see this progress. That's right. Tonight, throughout this course of this live stream, we're gonna teach you how to budget, that's one. We're gonna teach you how to decrease your, your expenses yep. so you can have more money. We're gonna show you how to increase your income so you can have more money. And then Rachel, you're gonna go over some really low lift things that you can do that have big, big gains. And then finally, I know 
we're going to talk about your car payment. I, I, know, <laughs> I know you don't want us to. It's really getting in there, Jake. Really that's right. There. That's right. Oh. Okay, so uh, when we go to Instagram, we see that from Crystal. She says that my budget is already tight, and I'm not sure how to get more money. Help. Ooh. And this is a legitimate problem that we're hearing from a lot of people. So, Jade, yes. let's just kick it off. We're going to kick it off with the budget. So this is not the first smart money move that we want you to make because the budget, you guys, is key. And I know that a lot of people, they cringe when they hear the word budget and they think, oh, Rachel, that means we can't have any fun. Right. That means that life is like, it's limited, it's constraining. I don't want to live on a budget. Budgets are for poor people, right? Yeah, pe people, I, yeah, I, I, I want to I enjoy life. And so you have to get over that hump because you have to realize that a budget is the thing that's going to give you control. If you sign on tonight and you're watching this, I'm sure your motivation is to get out of student loan debt. And you guys, the budget is the roadmap to be able to do it. So the budget is so, so key. And so we're gonna dive in. We're gonna use yes. Every Dollar, our budgeting app. The one that I use, Jade, I think you, you use we Every use Dollar. We use Every Dollar to get out of debt. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, so this is a great budgeting app. So we're gonna use this as an example because we wanna walk you through a real life budget to show you here's how you get margin. Here's how you free up some expenses and really get to the nitty gritty details. Yes. So, Let's use this budget as an example. We're going to use a couple, let's say they have a toddler. Yes. Uh, and they're going to make the average household income, which is $71,000. So when you look at that after taxes, it's it's $57,800. So divided by 12, that's $2,400 per paycheck that they're getting. They're making $4,800 a month. And so we actually have Jake over here, Mr. Jake. He's helping <laughs> us fill out uh, all of the every dollar stuff. So Jake, thank you <laughs> thank in you advance Jake. for your quick math. This is gonna be great. Okay, so we're gonna use them as an example. So for a for the starting budget, you need to know it's your income minus all of your expenses, including giving and saving, mm -hmm. should equal zero. Okay, so as you see, we started with giving and you're gonna go down, there were some savings up there and then this is all the expenses. So you're gonna go fill out every single thing that you spend on throughout the month. And so as you look, it's all of this and then the last, bit, Jade, which is hard, is the debt. You're going to fill out the debt section. So this is credit cards, student loans, car payments, any type of debt that you have, smallest to largest. Yes. You're going to fill it out here. And what you're going to see is your income minus all of this. You're going to see this number. And in this example, ah! it's seven, it's almost $800. That's in over. Red, in the red, right? So they are negative that amount of money. And what that shows me, Jade, is a lot of people, and we hear this all the time from you guys, that you feel like your money is just, it feels out of control or, you know, you're, you're kind of scared because you're like, I don't know exactly what's going on. It's this restlessness that you feel around money. And the truth is, you know, that's probably very legitimate because oh, yeah. this could be your situation. So we don't want to scare you and freak you out, but this is the power of a budget, you guys. All these feelings you're having around your money where you feel insecure, you don't know what's going on. The thing about the budget is you're actually facing it head on. You're seeing the numbers, you're seeing the facts, which is so important to get ahead. So that first money move we want you to make is to create a budget. And so this is an example. And then the next thing you wanna do is use the budget to get margin, which means you're gonna look and say, hey, where can we cut expenses, which is number two. Yeah. Before I get to number two, I just want to sympathize because you are going to do the budget and you're yeah. going to go, oh crap, I've been overspending all this time. No wonder I have an American Express bill, <laughs> right? Yes, right, yeah, and the reality hits. Just understand, like it takes a couple of months to get this right. Like the first time you're really just guessing, you're doing your best. Yeah. It's going to take a couple of months to lock in. The first time Sam and I did our budget and really wrote down our numbers, I felt worse before I felt better, right? Yes. And so I just want to acknowledge this is a process. Keep walking down the road. Give so, yourself grace to yes. end this, for sure, for grace. sure. Grace. So budget, now let's talk about, okay, we've got all these expenses. Let's talk about cutting expenses. Now, caveat, because I know, Rachel, as soon as I said that, people were like, what are you about to cut, Jade? Don't what are you, what touch are you taking away? <laughs> I'm having fun. I know. Don't, don't, don't take money away from don't me. Touch, don't take it. But here's the thing I want you guys to remember. Rachel, all this, everything we're talking about, it is temporary. That yes. is the word of the evening. This is a temporary short-term sacrifice for a long-term game. So hang with me as I cut our budget back, okay? And anyone can do this. Can I say this? You're going to see this and you're going to be like, oh gosh. But listen, for a short amount of time, anyone can do anything, right? That's for right. a few months, you can do this. So where are we going to start, Jade? Well, if it's me, I'm starting on the biggest budget buster that we all know. Say it with me. Food. food. Oh, <laughs> takeout it's and everyone. groceries <laughs> and 7-Eleven and Sonic, okay? Restaurants. When it's time to get out of debt, when it's time to find peace with our money, we've got to make sure we're not overspending. And so we're starting with this category that is the biggest one. I'm going to cut restaurants because they're a want, not a need. I'm cutting it down to zero. And I know, Rachel, like, it's like, ugh, like I hurt know. me. 
Because but it's convenient, right? As you're yes. out and about all of this. But again, you're going to say, we've done math on this mm -hmm. so often. We get so much hate for this because everyone's like, no, no, no. Eating at home is cheaper. And it may not be the most elaborate, the most wonderful meal, but for a season, you can do it. We say beans and rice, rice and beans here at Ramsey, and that's it, you guys, limited. But yes. let's up groceries. Yeah, let's put more in groceries because the fact of the matter is if you're never going out to eat, you're yep. probably spending more money eating at home and making better meals. So let's up that to $500. And already, Rachel, I hear it through the interwebs. They're like, Jade, family of four eating on $500, explica por favor, Rachel, <laughs> help them understand yeah, what know. we're doing here. Well, here's the deal, you guys. Again, for a season temporarily, think about your grocery budget. And I get it. This is a place that you can overspend so quickly. But where you shop is so important. That's there right. are expensive grocery stores. And then you got Aldi, right? You got places <laughs> that you can save. So for a season, shop places like that. Uh, make a list before you go. Actually, if you can go online, if there's a place that you can go online and fill everything out without extra charge or delivery fees, but Ooh, to be able to say, yes. if I can do pickup, that way you can see your total. Even buying store brand stuff versus branded. Can I tell Amazing. you, Amazing, yes. Okay, in my house for my show, I yes. did this experiment just this last week, you guys. Four different items. I mean, this is like raisins, animal crackers. I mean, nothing like big. I did store brands <laughs> versus name brands. My kids had didn't know the difference except for the Honey Nut Cheerios. Yeah. They did know that. They were like, this tastes different. Besides <laughs> that, those four items. And then I did, yeah. and then I did the math to say, okay, if we bought these twice a week over time, it was $360 per year. Look. And that's just on those four items, you guys. So think about that. I mean, these little switches, I know it seems like we're nickel and diming, but yes. wherever you can find, that margin is big. And Jade, I want so you to good. share, if you will, real quick. I'm spontaneous. No, let's go, spot. let's go. But the story of you and Sam, when you were in the grocery store, oh. you guys were on this journey. Yes. But y'all were so hardcore of like, we're not going over budget. We set this amount of money. Yeah. That's and the right. oatmeal came in. Oh play. gosh, I knew this is where you were going. So let me really quick. So we were probably year six and a half into our journey, had a little bit left to go. And I mean, it's down to the wire. Every cent, every dollar counts. And I had a grocery list. I would not enter the store without a grocery list. We're going through the aisles. I look and I notice there's a box of oatmeal in the cart. And I'm like, looking at my list, like that's not supposed to be in the cart. And so I see my husband, Sam, and I say, hey, did you put that oatmeal in the cart? He says, yeah, it was me, but... It's just one box. It's just a couple of dollars. I look at the list. I'm like, is it, but is it on the list though? He's like, Jade, it's not on the list, but I feel like we can't. And I'm like, Sam, it was like one of those moments mm -hmm. where you're just eye to eye and you're like, totally. it's like a moment. help me understand. And so we're facing each other face off and I start to see his eyes like glistening. He's like, Jade, it's just oatmeal. And I'm like, it's not just oatmeal. Because if we start sacrificing in this area, we'll pull back in other areas. And that's how it goes. It's like a domino effect. You pull back here, you pull back there. And before you know it, you're not intense anymore. And before you know it, that, that road that you were walking on to get debt free, it gets slower and slower and slower. And so it was one of those moments where it's like, no, let's put it back. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't getting teary and misty because of sure. oatmeal. No, He's getting it, teary and misty because this- It matters. It, it matters. This yeah. is emotional for us, right? Yeah. Being able to go out and spend, that's an emotional feeling. And yeah. when you tell somebody, hey, take that restaurant category to zero, we're not going to sit around and act like that doesn't hurt. We're not going to, look, twist and shout does not taste the same as Oreos, okay? <laughs> Nobody's going to act like they do. But is it worth it? Absolutely. So yeah. that's where we landed on that. For that season. Yes. Okay, so where else can we cut, you think? All right. Number two, down? you guys are subscriptions, Rachel. Oh, subscriptions. yes. Subscriptions. Millennials on average, you ready for this, you guys? 17 subscriptions Ooh. on average that people, that millennials specifically have, which is wild. So, And they're usually duplicates, is, so let's go in and yeah. look. We got HBO Max and Netflix. We don't need both of those. I'd and say, Disney. Yeah, keep Disney. We'll keep Disney yeah. for now, just because we got a little kid in this example. Get rid of HBO Max. Yeah. Uh, get rid of Apple Music. You can YouTube yep. the music you for, want for and free. And Amazon Prime, stop what you're doing right now and delete Amazon Prime ah, that one from hurts. your phone because y'all know you're spending too much. <laughs> I'm included in that. All right, what else? And uh, Lawn service. Oh, lawn service. And that's the thing, Rachel, go through because there's lots of miscellaneous items. Once you make your budget, you're thinking of everything you might spend yep. money on. And you're going to see a lot of things like buy your own lawnmower on Craigslist and cut your own grass. So scroll down, Jake, and let's see some of these other things that people spend so money on. is legitimate, and that's the other thing, you guys, about the budget. If you're filling out a budget, you wanna make it realistic, right? If you put zero for all these categories, that's not realistic. Right. So make it realistic. But so yeah, so like fun money can be there, a little bit of miscellaneous. Yes, that's fine. Uh, because there's gonna be stuff that comes up throughout the month. So some of this is good, but what you see up there in the red, Jade, is that we were almost, remember, negative $800, mm -hmm. and now it's almost, you know, it's 467. Yeah. We're going in the right direction. Which is great. But we still have more to do. 
So let's talk about getting and, your income up, yeah, right? Because the the formula when you're looking at the budget is really two factors. It's your expenses, the money going out, and then the money coming in. So we talked about expenses. Let's talk about the money coming in, which okay. is income. Income. We we can look at that in two ways, right? There's your core income that you make from your main job, and then there's the side hustle, right? That was like mm -hmm. the buzzword of the last three years. Side hustling, right? Extra money coming in. And let me tell you, if you make a great core income, this is the key you need to drive this number up. So you have extra money, not only to make your payment, but eventually pay off these debts and make quick progress. So let's take a- Yeah, from Bree on Instagram, she says, I am a teacher. What are the best side jobs to pay off student loans? Ooh. So yeah, if, here, Bree's a great example. So if you're a teacher, I would automatically say, can you tutor on yes. the side? Like what are things that you can do that you already have the skill set you're already doing maybe in your day job that you can take and actually make some money? And I yeah, talked about this on my show as well, Jay, because there are so many lucrative side hustles out there, you guys. So it's everything from food delivery service, uh, pet sitting, babysitting, even things like jewelry cleaning we yes. found that people pay for, wrap your card. If you're gonna be driving, companies will pay you to wrap your car as you're driving. It's amazing. That's right. Uh, referee sports games. I mean, there are so many options out there, you guys. So look at those side hustles. And you and Sam, you guys did a bunch as you were getting out of debt. Absolutely. And I'm thinking as you're saying that, I'm like, obviously, like your own job, like overtime at your own job, yes, right? For sure. Or nurses, you can get that overtime. That's mm -hmm. great. Uh, what Sam and I did is we took the things that we were already good at already passionate about, and we turn those into side hustles because then you get to set your own hours, set your own pay. So we were both musicians, so we did uh, lots of different types of music lessons. My husband's great at like technology, so he did websites. I love cooking and baking. So I made wedding cakes and cupcakes and all of that stuff. So find something that you like. The goal here is we want to make between like around $20 yeah, an $20 hour. Yeah, $20 an hour. And again, you guys, fair. and remember this, we're going to say, we're going to be a broken record up here because we want to drill this in your head. Temporary. 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 We always say live like no one else. So later you can live and give like no one yes. else. So all this extra working, all this cutting expenses, I know it can feel overwhelming. It's for a season. Okay. On, on average, 18 to 24 months. What? It takes for people say to, that again. to get out of debt. 18 to 24 months, year and a half to two years. Okay. So just drill down and, and really focus on that timeline. So yeah. Ooh. But but with the side hustles, Jade, like you're saying, yes. if you did $20 an hour, you know, 15 hours yep. a week, the extra. Aim, yeah, the aim is to get to a thousand dollars between you and your spouse, or if you're single, just you, a thousand extra dollars after taxes. So you're able to come in here and say, okay, I'm taking home a thousand dollars here, her side hustle, a thousand dollars. Like I feel like that is very yes. feasible. So that's thing one. And now we're out of the we're out of the red. Look at this. See you guys. We're and so fifteen hundred dollars. Mm -hmm in the positive, which is so exciting. This is where the momentum really starts to pick up. That's excellent. So we've talked about side hustling. Now let's talk about the other part of your income, probably the most important part of your income, mm -hmm. your core income. This is what you're earning from your main job. Now, if you're anything like Sam and I, some of us, our core income is not sustainable as it is. When Sam and I first started, we were making 30,000 between yeah. the two of us. That's not good, okay? So we needed to make steps to make it better. And some of you need to do that too. It might be looking at a completely different career path. And Ken Coleman, uh, one of the personalities that we work with has such good uh, content yeah. on that. You can check him out. It might look like certifications. It might look like moving to a place where there's more opportunity. Whatever it is, you need to sit down and start tracking a path to create a sustainable, higher core income long-term. And I can't stress it enough. This is long-term. This is right. gonna take some time. It took Sam and I several years, really all of that seven and a half year debt-free journey to really get our income up to where it needed to be. So you can do that. Didn't happen overnight, but let's pretend that you know the folks on our budget here, we'll call them Jack and Jane, because I just like that. Let's pretend <laughs> that they found Jane, a Jane. way to get their income up over the long haul. Yeah. Let's say they're making 15,000 more a year combined. combined. Yeah. That's fair enough, like we can imagine that. So if they did, that'd be about, uh, let's see, $12,750 after taxes that they're adding to their paycheck. So that's about $530 per paycheck. So Jake, let's add that in. I think that's reasonable quick to bring math. home another $530 each. Totally reasonable. Yes. And then you look up, Jade, you got $2,500, you guys, right? So you're starting to see this kick yeah. in, which is so great. Okay, next, let's look at what we call low lift, big gains. So first and foremost... Take a deep breath, but I'm gonna encourage you to pause retirements. Wait a second. Pause your investing. Rachel, what are you doing? I know, it's the thing everyone hates. Everyone's like, Rachel, but it's free money. I'm getting a match <laughs> from my 401k. 
Listen, what we have found is when you can channel all of your income, as much income as possible to one thing, and you focus all your energy, all your time on one thing, you get it done that much faster. Because if you pause retirement, again, this is on average two years, maybe into three. After all that's done and you have a fully funded emergency fund, then you'll, then you'll fund 15% of your income into retirement. So you will catch up, okay? So pausing for the short term. So what we have found, Jade, is that on average, people are contributing about 4% of their paycheck to retirement. So let's okay. say they pause this. That's gonna be $118 per paycheck going back into, wait, what'd you call them, Jane and? Jack and Jane. Jack and Jack Jane's and Jane. paycheck. Okay, so there they are. <laughs> so we see that rising, okay. So pausing investing, number two is to adjust your withholdings. If you got a big tax refund this year, listen, that is money that was sitting in Washington. Maybe right now you have money sitting in Washington that could be in your paychecks to help you be paying off this debt. Oh, and it's interest-free. It's just sitting there. Oh, it's, it's just not sitting even there. I know, interest. I know. So adjust your withholdings, get your tax refund. On average, Americans are getting about $3,000 in a tax refund, which means some people are getting more, some yeah. people are getting less. Wow. But $3,000, and you think about that, and you divide it by 12, divide it by two paychecks, that's $125 per paycheck. That's a lot of money. That can be put back in, right? So it's like all, even if it's $100 here, $100 there, you guys, that, that, changes, that changes the scenario. Mm -hmm. So after you do all that, Jade, look at that, $3,000, $3,000 that we have, which is so exciting. And then last and not least, which we won't add numbers here, but I just would encourage you guys to shop your insurance. Mm. Shopping your insurance rates could actually save you thousands of dollars. And you know, insurance you pay quarterly, or annually, and you don't really shop rates. Sometimes you just kind of get plugged in and That's you just right. pay the bill. So we don't want you to be underinsured by any means, but go and shop your rates from car insurance, life insurance, and just see, hey, could I get a better rate on this? And that could save you a lot over the long haul. So Jade, Very this cool. is where wow. this is where the budget, you guys, gets empowering because you start to see we started in the negative, remember that? That feeling, and now as you start making adjustments you're getting to actually see this work. But then the last one, Jade, which is, people are not gonna like <laughs> All you. Right. They may like me at the end of this, Jade. I don't know if they're I gonna know. like you because of this. No, don't kidding. log off, <laughs> stick with me. Okay, I want you to consider your car payment. I know, I know. Here's the reason I can tell you this. I would never tell you to do something that I have not first done myself. And here's the fact. All right, Rachel, Yeah. most people are paying somewhere between $500 and $700 a month for one car, for just one. And I know that there's a lot of two car family households watching tonight. So here's what I'm saying. Look, again, I'm not gonna tell you to do something I wouldn't do myself. Sam and I used to have two cars. We had a Jeep Liberty that we paid $303 a month for. Then we had a Hummer H3 that we paid <laughs> $434 a month for. That's over $740 a month. That's a lot of money. That's more than a student loan payment, okay? And all I'm saying is some of you, I don't know, like Jack and Jane right here, they've got a RAV4 and they're paying $615 a month for it. And a $32,000 loan is oh, what they took out. That's what, 32,000 weighing on your shoulders. What would happen, Rachel, if they said, you know what, I'm done. I'm gonna take this car. It doesn't matter if you're upside down, because somebody, I hear the objection. Yeah. Someone in the interwebs is going, but Jade, I'm upside down on my car payment. You know, I owe, you know, it's, I'll take a $4,000 hit. I would say take that hit. Yep. Take that hit and then take you $4,000 cash with it. Go buy something in cash. Get you like a little eight, you know, $4,000, $5,000, $6,000 beater. Drive it temporarily. Okay? If you can't go with one, you know, if you can't do one car, get you a beater for the second car, but get rid of that $32,000 of debt and that $600, <sighs> let it be gone. And then you get in, look up, you guys. Oh my I mean, gosh. It's almost $3,700 at this point. So you're starting to see the sacrifices that you're making, it's getting you somewhere. Yes. It's not just doing it for the sake of doing mm -hmm. it. It's actually mm -hmm. towards a goal and towards a purpose because yeah. what's great about this now, Jade, is you can take that almost $3,700 and let's look at the debt here. So this is an Amex card they yeah. have. The payment's $75 a month. Yep, and it's a total of $890. Well, we've freed up all this you know, this income, $3,600, almost $3,700, that can be paid off right now. And one month paid off. So it's gone. And then you go and look at this student loan, $6,000 balance. Okay, so you won't be able to pay it fully off here, but you're gonna get close to by it. By next month, it's gone. Yeah, by next month, it's gone. So what you, got, what you can start to do, when you download every dollar for free, you can start kind of playing with these numbers, which is really exciting because start mapping it out and say, okay, mm -hmm. well, how long will it take us to pay off this debt? And you go down and you start to map out and see, okay, how much money is getting freed up because you don't have these other minimum payments. You're rolling it all to the next debt, the next debt. 
And then let's just take it to the extreme, Jay. Let's just go all the way until this example of Jack and Jane, that they are debt free. Oh, come on. And here's the powerful thing is after your emergency funds, there's $4,000, which means the side hustles are over. Yeah. You're done. You can Let breathe. That go. Then you have $2,000 left, right? Because the $2,000 mm -hmm. from the side hustle, it stops to, to free it up that you can use. And that every month, every month you have that, that margin. And that's the power of getting your income back. That's the power financially and mathematically when you become debt free is that your income is yours. And we know you guys work hard. You work hard for your income. You deal with jerky bosses. You deal with people you don't like. You sit yeah. in traffic, right? You work hard just to have your money being sucked out by that. all this debt versus it being there at the top where it's yours and it's all yours and you get to decide what to do with it. And that's exactly, this was a perfect illustration of what I was saying earlier about these IDRs. This is when you get a lower minimum payment so you get lots of extra money yeah. here. You can make that progress so fast. This, what we just showed you is exactly what Sam and I did. That's exactly how we got out of debt and I mean, it's temporary. Yeah. You get to have the money back and that's the best part. Live like no one else. So later you get to live like no one else. And we Great. see people doing this all the time. And Jay, we're actually standing right now here at Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Yeah. So right behind us, you can't see, is the radio studio. And we mm -hmm. sit there while families or people travel from all over and they stand on the stage to do their debt-free screams. They've paid off student loans. they paid off their credit cards. And so we know that. Even on Instagram, we get people, yes. you know, in Facebook, we, we get people messaging us on YouTube, their story. So it is so powerful. So just like... Kat and James, for example, they paid off $80,000 in 21 months. Or John, he paid off $83,000. I remember John. You do? Yeah. yeah. He's great. Yep. And then Greg and Meredith, they paid off $425,000 in student loans. Come on. He must be a doctor. Or a dentist. I think he's a dentist. Yeah, he's he got, looks like a dentist. He's got good teeth. He's <laughs> but yeah, you guys, I mean, these are real life stories that we see constantly, constantly. So we want you to know that this is possible. But with those money moves that we just walked through, try them out, do it. Start the process today. Start taking that first step because man, it, it is powerful. You see that hope That's and you right. see that it's possible. That's right. Yeah, and Dave, I mean, you've been doing this for what, 30 years. So you know, and you've seen these stories and experienced this, that, that it is, it's so doable. It's You're hard, exactly but right. it's doable. Great job, y'all. Thank yeah, you. Thank impressive. You. you know, if you do what they teach you, what they just taught you, you start doing a budget, you get the Every Dollar app downloaded, you're going to feel like you got a raise. Uh, research says that you're going to save as much as $325 a month just by being organized. But mm -hmm. we actually see that it goes a lot further than that because you're organized with a goal. And John Maxwell, my friend, says a budget is people telling their money what to do instead of wondering where it went. And Zig Ziglar used to say, if you aim at nothing, you'll hit it every time. So that'd be the opposite of budgeting, right? Right, so right. Let's have a target. Let's have a target. And let's not do ready, aim, 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 aim. Let's say ready, aim, fire. Yeah. Let's lay out what we're going to do and go for it and knock this stuff down. You're going to feel like you got a raise. Hey, here's the deal. Try it for 90 days. And then if it doesn't work, you can go back to what you were doing that wasn't working. I mean, try. Try something different. Plug something else in, right? So what we're doing is we're going to let you have every dollar, the app, completely free. Go to everydollar.com slash student loans or use the QR code and it'll land you right on the landing page and you can download the Every Dollar app for free. Get it on your phone. You and your spouse can both look at it and both use it. You're going to be able to do everything you need to do. And if you do that tonight, we're going to throw in three other things right there on that same landing page. 14-day Money Finder video series that Rachel did. And uh, it's a great series where yeah, you, we'll over 14 days, you find money. Yeah, it's small little tasks, but yeah, it, it frees you up. It's kind of what we talked about tonight. But Some of the little ideas. little light lift things you had on yeah, there, that type of great, stuff. Yeah, and it right? really frees up some money. And the meal planner and grocery savings guide is a big deal. I'm still not sure you can do it on 500 bucks with a family of three well, right now, but you guys, are you guys are making me a believer. But I can okay. tell you, you won't do it if you do it on accident. <laughs> That's right. you right. got to go in with a list. You it's can't hard. go to the grocery store easy. hungry, and the kids don't get to decide. Yeah. That's right. you got to lay out some rules about this because it's out of control because the best merchandisers in the world are grocery stores. Yeah, That's and let me right. say this, too. And we talked to families. I was even talking to a friend who's in this, too, and they're like, I'm just tired of, like, having the list. I, I want to yeah. just go in and just buy whatever I can. And I'm like, you're so close. You're going to be able to, like, if you stick with it, stick with it. But that grocery budget, it can go over so fast. You know, fast. when Rachel was, the year Rachel was born, uh, we went completely broke and lost everything. And that was my wife, her mom, Sharon's big thing. Mm -hmm. She said, someday, 
Someday we're going to make enough money that I can go and just put whatever I want in my buggy. Yeah. And let me tell you, now she can. <laughs> yes. on, now that. she can. She could just fill that buggy full. And the woman is cheap and she still won't do it. Thank you for she saying a buggy. Thank you for saying a buggy. That's such a Papa Dave term. <laughs> Of a it was a grocery cart. cart. What is grocery it? Cart. It's a grocery cart. It's a southern you say thing. buggy. It's a Just buggy. Say it's a horse and buggy. So uh, you do the meal planner and the grocery savings guide. It's going to be part of the three things we give you if you sign up for every dollar tonight. And the third one is the audio course from Ken Coleman, our uh, our career expert here at Ramsey, our Ramsey personalities guy that does all that stuff. How to increase your income. And that's a big one. So we get the income up, the out go down, the margin, just like they outlined for you, is going to give you the margin to be able to attack this. You can do this stuff. That's right. But you are going to have to do it. No one else is going to do it. And so go to everydollar.com slash student loans or scan that QR code. All of this is free, including the three extra add-ons are free if you do it tonight. That's right. Okay, so let's go back to some questions because you guys showed up on Instagram when we asked for some they questions. showed up and showed out. Which is great. Okay, so let's take some of these, uh, some of these questions. So we have from Jana, Jenna, sorry. Is it worth getting a loan when you want to pursue a master's degree? So this is a big one. A lot of people look at that second, secondary mm -hmm. education. Well, if you want to pursue any degree, is it worth getting a loan? Is right. a good discussion. And whether it's a master's degree or an undergrad or even a PhD, yeah. the question Ken Coleman always brings up is, is it necessary to have that degree in order to get into the profession? Okay, if the answer is no, then don't even go get it right now right. until you've got the money to pay cash. And then you, it's a luxury to add it then. It's a luxury of knowledge to add it. Um, if the answer is yes, now there's some examples like, for instance, if you want to be a therapist in every state in the U.S., you have to have at least a master's level degree in uh, social work and psychology in order mm -hmm. to sit for the board and become a therapist. Okay, so there's some things where you have to have a master's level. Mm -hmm. A lot of accounting programs now are requiring a master's level to go into the CPA. Even teachers, not, education. Not all of them. That's true. Some, That's some teacher situations yeah. are, but, yeah. but most things don't require a master's. That's true, yep. And so, and, and the same is true with, you know, with your undergrad. If you have no clue what you're doing with your undergrad, then for goodness sakes, you know, do I need to go into debt for my undergrad? No, absolutely. You don't go into debt for any of this. Don't put yourself in the position that mm. this was. I mean, yeah. here, here's the thing. You can go to college and some people should go to college to study a good degree at a good place and get the knowledge and choose something that is price sensitive. And you don't have to go to a famous college to be right. successful. You don't have to spend a ton of money. You don't have to go to some Ivy League thing to be successful. That is mythology. And so go to an in-state school, choose the school carefully, and you know you can go to school debt-free. Yeah, Absolutely. school choice is, is huge, you guys. I mean, community colleges, in-state tuition, take advantage of all of that. And you're right, I think what's hard is that you know at 18, it's like you're expected to choose something, a degree, and, and if you don't have guidance, right, people get stuck in going to these schools they can't afford, getting a degree that they don't really know. <laughs> so looking at the ROI of what you're studying, right, and parents out there that have teenagers, be guiding your student in that. And then, of course, scholarships, grants, working, all of it. And it's, going it's into the possible. trades is an option. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, our friend Mike Rowe talks about that a lot, and I completely agree with him. Mm -hmm. We're talking to people now going in the trades. Oh, yeah. Diesel mechanic making six figures, welder making six figures. And meanwhile, you got somebody going $250,000 in debt to get That's a degree right. in social work, and they're making 38000 mm -hmm. See, this is backward. Right. You don't want to do this. Yeah. you got to look at the degree with a level of practicality. Really, the degree is not even the answer. The answer is knowledge. Mm. We got confused a few years ago, and we started telling everybody they need a degree. Everybody they need a degree, which what we should have been telling them is what you need is knowledge. And you can acquire knowledge a lot of ways, a lot of places, in a lot of different settings, mm -hmm. from apprenticeships to certifications to community college to, you know, in-state tuition. You can, you can acquire knowledge. And really what you need is knowledge. And really, if you quit learning after college, you're done. You're not going to be successful. Mm -hmm. Lifetime learners are the That's ones right. that are successful. Yeah, so make sure to check out Borrowed Future. This is a documentary that it's free on YouTube. But we talk about this, this whole topic in depth, so make sure to check that out. All right, the next question is from Elizabeth. How do I manage my loans while starting a life with my fiance? Wedding, oh, buying a house, all, the, all that new season. <laughs> Why does that ring a bell? I get that. You know, when you come out of college, you get married, you want all the things that you, you saw your parents have, right? You want the cars and you want the home, the big house, right, with the fully furnished. You want to get to all these things so quickly, but 
I will say there's a right way and mm -hmm. there's a peaceful way to go about that. And then there's a wrong way and a stressful way to go about that. And so just like what we outlined before, it's so important to pay off your debt first. It's so important to get free and free up that income so that you can buy the house that you want. You can save up a good down payment so that you can buy a house. It's not taking up too much of your monthly income. 25% is what we recommend of your take home pay. And that house becomes a blessing. It's no longer a burden. So to answer your question, yes, pay off your loans first, set aside a thousand dollars, you know, just as an emergency fund, pay off your debt. Then after that, save up three to six months of emergency fund, then save up a down payment, and then you're on your way. That's right, and even things like a wedding, right? They're, they're exciting. It's a of celebratory course. day, so oh. you wanna enjoy it. But when you're in this process, you know, you may look and say, okay, if we're the ones that are having to foot the bill for the wedding, we have to be wise about that. Mm -hmm. And so just like we're saying, being wise about college and further education, be wise about these big events that are happening in your life, including your wedding. So. Just be mindful of that. So here's a good idea. Let's force rank these things is what we would call it. Love that. And say not no, yeah. but not now. That's yes. Okay. In not buying scale. a not buying a house now. We're gonna do a wedding that's reasonable. We're gonna come out, get married, join hands, and we're gonna attack the student loan debt. Then we've got the freedom to build an emergency fund, then build a good down payment, and then move into the house. This is the right order of things. Well, I might have to rent. Renters aren't going to hell. It's not a salvation issue. <laughs> So you can rent for a little while. It's I rent. Gonna kill we rented for, we rent for 10 people, years. <laughs> most people rent when they first get married, for That's at right. least for a little while. All years. right, next from Tracy. Can I negotiate remaining amount owed since I've been paying for decades? Tracy, Ooh. I wish you could, but if it's a federally insured mm -hmm. student loan, the answer is no, you can't, because it's federally insured. Yeah. What that means is, is the government has guaranteed the bank that they're gonna get 100% of the money regardless of whether you pay them or not, or regardless of the story or how sad it is. The bank doesn't care, the loan servicer doesn't care. They're in it for the money, and if you don't believe me, just try messing with them. They, they, will, be in, they will act incompetent to keep you in debt because they know the government is going to pay them 100% if you don't. So, no help there. Now, private student loans, yes, you can negotiate with mm -hmm. them. And uh, there's actually a company that's been advertising with us called Y Refi, W R E F Y. You can look them up, and they will help you with private loans. They actually buy your loan at a discount and then set you up a reduced interest rate and put you on payments. And after you've been paying a year, you can buy the loan out from them at a discount. Huh. And so that's a good program, actually, mm -hmm. if you want to get going on it. If you've got a little cash and you want to settle with a settle your own loans, you can do that on private, but you yeah. cannot do it on federal. I'm sorry. That's what Sam and I did. We were able to knock back a significant amount of interest that had been accruing over the years. And because it was private and they wanted, I mean, they want money at the end of the day. So if you can offer them a lump sum, that it's definitely worth trying at the end well, of the day. Well, the thing you got to remember is that a private loan is bankruptable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if, if you've been behind and then you get caught up, they're kind of scared uh -huh. about whether you're going to bankrupt on uh -huh. them. The public loans are not bankruptable. And so they know they're going to get their money. Right. So no negotiation. That's right. All right, next is from Liz Marie. Is co consolidation of the loans in a single payment worth it? So we talk about this, about debt consolidation in yeah. general, that we are usually kind of like an eh against it because a lot of people think, well, if I can just move the math around, move the payments around, it'll be a better deal for me. Mm -hmm. But the problem is you're not fixing the problem, which is us. It's me. That's it's you, right? right? So, so debt consolidation usually is not a great plan. But with student loan debt, it is the type of debt that you most likely don't go back into. And so if, if you need to consolidate one type of debt, student loans would be the one to do it. And I think you even talked about, you told me that you and Sam did this and yep. got a lower interest rate. That's right. When you're doing your federal student loans, you can, um, you have the option, usually coming out, you've got one t chance yeah. to take them and consolidate mm -hmm. them. So if you're watching this now and maybe you're just graduating or because of the pause, this is your first time kind of entering into that, you want to shop around your options, right? Because they're all emailing you, right? It's saying, mm -hmm. this is the one to do, this is the one to do. Don't take the first option. Really look at the interest rate. Look at your current interest rates and see if on average this is going to be a better choice for you because you only get one shot. So make sure it's a good one, shoot your shot. And make sure you're lowering your interest rate because yes. we're in an increasing oh, yeah, interest yeah. environment. So they may be offering you a rate that you can refinance and consolidate that's higher that's right. than it's your current good. rates. Yes. So don't do that. It's yeah, better to have six point. little ones right. that, that have smaller rates than one big one with a bigger rate. That's right, very, very good point. All right, next is from Corinne. I'm a stay-at-home mom and my husband's gonna help me, I think pay off the debt, uh, but I feel, uh, but all I feel is guilt. 
what can I do? Oof. So this is a this is a real one. I mean, we talk we hear this a lot from couples. If one of them is bringing significant amount of debt in, that was Sam. But here's the deal. Yeah. <laughs> Look, Jake's I'm calling like, out my husband. Listen. Sam, did you feel <laughs> guilt? Jake, we love you, Sam. If you're we watching. love you, Sam, but you brought in $230,000 of student loan debt. Hey, so talk about that, Jay. What was that like? Because, <laughs> because... Did he, I mean, you, you didn't beat him up, really. No, I didn't beat him up. You know what? I don't know if this was wisdom or, like, just, like, young and ignorance and, like, oh, like, love glasses on, but I really was like, oh, it's our debt. Like, yeah. It's us. Like, we're going to do this together. We're going to take it on the world. And it was very difficult for him to let me do that. Because mm -hmm. for him, it's like, oh, I'm bringing this in. I'm the one that's weighing us down. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, we have to, like, let that go. If you love someone, like, you become one when you get married, right? Like, it's, it's no longer you and me. We're us and our. And we go through life that way. And that guilt that she's feeling is real. Like I'm validating that it's real, but at the same time you have to accept when yeah. someone says we're in this together and I love you and I'm taking this on and what's done is done and let's just live in the future and live in the present and go forward. Yeah, because working as a team, you're gonna get so much further ahead, yeah. so much further. It's really hard to win with money. It's hard to get out of debt. It's hard to budget. It's hard to do all this when both spouses are not in agreement if you're married. And we find this a lot. A lot of people ask, how do I get my spouse on board? And so it's everything from telling them, you know, your why. Why are you wanting to get out of debt? Why do you not want your student loans around? Why do you want a budget? You know, showing them a plan. Like, there's ways to go about it. But here's the deal. At the end of the day, a lot of marriage problems, you know, come up through the money cycle, the money portion of your marriage, where it's not really even the money problem. It's the marriage problem. And so getting underneath the hood even of your marriage, you guys, we really encourage you to do that. And if it's, you know, sitting down with a, with a counselor or, you know, a marriage uh, therapist or something, but really getting to the heart because we want your marriage to be better in this process. If you're married and you're doing this journey together, we want your marriage to be stronger. And what's crazy is we find that. People yeah. that work together, they say it all the time. They're like, our marriage is the best it's ever been. And we're like, we're not teaching about marriage. We're teaching about money. And fighting a dragon <laughs> together. Is, yeah, yeah, that's you've right. Got this There's a unity dragon, that's You're fighting created. it together. That's, that's right, a, that's exactly. Deal. So here, here's the thing, Corinne. When, when we went bankrupt, Sharon and I, we were in our 20s, and it was all my fault. And so I could sit, sit and say, and I did for a while, it's all my fault, it's not Sharon's fault. And I could use that to destroy our future because that became my shame-based identity. Instead... I said, that's, we, we talked about it, we worked through it spiritually, emotionally, maritally, mm -hmm. and, and we said, that's a thing that happened. Mm -hmm. Student loans are a thing that happened. A and they're in the rear view mirror. The decision's in the rear view mirror. We're gonna have a, we are someone who has filed bankruptcy, but we are not bankrupt people. That's right, yeah. We have a future. And so the, the, the shame and the guilt goes away when you start aiming at the future instead of living in the past. Yeah. And so the decision's made, done, we're married, we're together, we're gonna fight it going forward. Good. All right, the next question is from Kendra. If we have the savings to pay them off, should we? One, two, three. Yeah, yes. 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 <laughs> yes, yes. Instantly. I know, and I think people Today. have this. What do you think this is a pet? <laughs> false. Today. Get rid of it. Sense, oh my gosh. This false sense of security, though, right? If you have all this savings in an account and it's sitting there, it feels, that feels safe, right? Yes. But Jade, you talk about this a lot, which I love, where yeah. you're like, it's not even technically your money if yeah. you owe money. It's bad math, right? The, the, the math ain't mathing, right? That's what they say, because you go, oh man, I got $15,000 saved. I got $30,000 in the bank. That's great. But you got $50,000 of debt. So if you take your little 15,000 and minus it from your debt, you're still in debt, you okay? You got a negative net worth. You got a That's negative right. net worth. So it's just an illusion, okay? The fact is that savings that you've got sitting in that cushy HSA, you owe that to someone. And you need to give them their money so that you can sleep at night and so that you can actually build a firm foundation, a good financial setting for yourself, pay off your debt, and then you'll have the margin to actually go in and save up three to six months of expenses, and then you'll actually have true savings that's actually yours. Yes. I love it. So that's good. the good math. <laughs> that's right. All right, let's take our last question from Kim. How can I get a Parent PLUS loan payment reduction if I'm separated and barely getting by? Hmm. Okay, so Kim, I think, is the obviously the parent in the situation. She's separated uh, okay. from, from her husband, and she's a single mom. I mean, she's barely getting by, and we talk to a lot of people that are in this situation, and with the Parent PLUS loan payment options, it can be difficult, um, 
through this program, but but we're saying like it's still worth it's You'll still worth apply, a shot. Apply for a refinance. Yeah. Apply yeah. for the consolidation process. It sets you up to maybe get into that save program, which as we've said six times is a horrible program, but it will give you a temporary reprieve mm -hmm. while you can get on top of this and start to pay extra using yeah. other means. But overall, the rest of you take this as a warning. Mm -hmm. Parent Plus loans really suck. It's a really dumb idea to use a Parent Plus loan. I mean, student loans are dumb. Parent Plus loans are double dumb, okay? <laughs> Stay away from both of these for sure. Mm -hmm. But th this lady is in a mess mm -hmm. because she tried to do something nice for her kid, yeah. and she did a, a good thing a bad way yeah. and her set herself up for a serious problem here. That's right. Well, you guys, we are so thankful that you joined us tonight. And I can tell you from us all standing here in this entire building of over a thousand people that work here at Ramsey Solutions, we are cheering you on. We're here in Franklin, but we, we know all over the country, even all over the world, maybe even watching, that this is possible, you guys. We just want you to hear that encouragement from us, not just to sit back and continue to let this problem just fester. But we hope that we've given you the proactive steps to really go forward and do something with this, you guys. I mean, it is powerful, not just financially, mathematically to become debt-free, but emotionally, spiritually, like what it does to change your family tree. I mean, us even sitting up here, I'm like, it's a generational change even from him yes. to me. So like, this, this is a powerful thing that you're choosing way beyond just paying off your debt. This is a bigger story. Absolutely. Yeah. When it comes to student loans, choose your heart. Being in debt for 30 years and having no money and retiring broke because you've never been able to invest aggressively because you stayed broke with debt, that's hard. That's, you know, you chose mediocrity at best. Mm. Or you can choose a really hard two to three year period of time. You can choose a RAV4 being sold or whatever the flip is going on here. You can choose your heart. So you need to decide which one you want. I, I, I believe and I know from the millions of people, literally, that's not an exaggeration, that we've shown how to get out of debt, that as you choose to be the hero in your own story and you choose to attack this dragon, you and your spouse lock arms, draw swords, and we're going to take them to the budget and we're going to temporarily, we're going to cut so much, we're going to sell so much stuff the kids think they're next, man. I mean, we are getting out of this. When you do that, you choose your hard, you're going to do it. Getting out of debt's hard, but we can guarantee it's worth it. Oh, yeah. You will never, I've never had someone call me back and go, oh, Dave, you know, it was really hard three years and you suck. It was a horrible idea. I wish I'd never met Dave Ramsey. I've never <laughs> had that happen. Not one time. And, and if you go do the hard stuff, everyone's always glad that they did. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but it yields a harvest of righteousness. We can guarantee this will work. Debt is not your friend. These people are not your friend. These politicians on either side of the aisle are not your friend. They talk about forgiveness of student loans, they talk about how evil they are, and they continue to make the student loans. That's intellectually dishonest. They are not your friends. You and your spouse, you people in your household, you're the answer to your problem. So that don't let these people steal your paycheck anymore. Don't let these incompetent, greedy student loan servicers and, and these colleges who have quadrupled their dad blame tuition, don't let them own your life. It's mm -hmm. time you take it back. Be the hero and take it back. We know this is possible. It's possible for you, but you're the only one that's gonna change your life. We can show you how. We're here to root you on. You call, you be a part of our program. Jump into that Every Dollar app. Any way we can help you, we will. But you're the hero. You're the one that's gonna bring the energy. You're the one that's gonna change that. When you make that decision, it changes everything. And then you can come here to Ramsey headquarters and stand on the debt-free stage and do your debt-free scream like these people. In the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. How much debt have you paid off, Paul? $110,000. $79,000. $130,000. $225,000. $250,000. Student, student debt. Student loans. Student loans. All student loans. Every dime of it was my student. Whoa. Oh. It was yeah. game on. We started <laughs> chunking everything at the debt. I moved. Started my own business. Grocery delivery. I did babysitting. I got a bus driver's license just to be able to get <laughs> extra money. Once we made the plan, it didn't seem as insurmountable as once we actually just got started because right. we were on the same track the whole time. You know, we both grew up in single parent, single income homes, and so we got to witness what the struggle was like to mm -hmm. make ends meet, and we said we wanted something different. It's okay. It sucks right now, but I mean, we're going to be done, mm -hmm. and then we get to move on and do the next big thing. And now you are. Uh, 
Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. Three, three, two, 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 one. We're debt free. We're debt free. We're debt free. <laughs> that is how it's done, ladies and gentlemen.